All across Britain, ordinary people are keeping a shocking secret. We are in the dining room. And their numbers are growing. This is my bedroom, and this is how I live. Over a million people are now living among mountains of clutter and rubbish. Oh, it just makes me so frustrated. And when a horde takes over... Oh, dear. Joe! It can damage everyone that lies in its path. We just need to get it cleared, Mum. That is not at all constructive or helpful. I'm sorry. Love you. Pushing families to breaking point. The problem's caused by you, Alison. By you and all your stuff. <laughs> Psychotherapist Stelios Kiosis has been treating hoarders for the last 16 years. There's a little hoarder in all of us. When it's out of hand, and that's what makes it different. I can't get out. <laughs> I'm trapped. And together with professional declutterers... The drop is quite big, actually. ..believes he can give hoarders back their homes and their lives in just six weeks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, you can get right into Oh, bed. my God! Look. <gasps> Tonight, Stelios meets compulsive shopper Ursula. What a challenging room, isn't it? It's a mess and I don't want to live like this. As she struggles to part with her purchases. So we can get rid of this then if you've got three or not. It. Why not? Because I'm keeping this. And vintage car enthusiast Nigel. Shiny old caps. Whose hoard has taken over his home. This is my lounge. But it's become a garage, hasn't it? <laughs> Well, I think I'm going to get that. I like it. If I could shop every day, I would. In Livam St Anne's, Lancashire, 54-year-old insurance worker Ursula loves to shop. So these are absolutely worth getting now. Is there a basket? I shop on the high street, I shop online, I shop on the television, I shop from catalogs, I shop anywhere I can, wherever I can, whenever I can. But behind the doors of her three-bedroom Edwardian villa, are the results of her addiction. A vast hoard of unopened gifts. <laughs> Each morning before Ursula heads to work, she battles her way through 20 years of unopened shopping bags, presents and unworn clothes. Something as basic as getting a laundry at load together, nothing is easy like it should be. Ursula shares her cluttered home with her husband and teenage son who are too embarrassed by her hoard to be on camera. We have two words for this house. One is an avalanche, and the other one is the black hole. And people laugh when I say we've got a black hole, and they say, oh, yeah, so have we, and I bet they haven't got one like this. Ursula buys the bulk of her purchases online. I shop quite a lot on various sites. I know I've been on eBay a few times. Over the last 10 years, Ursula has spent over £45,000 on impulse buys. £375, no, that's on offer. Now, that's terrible for me. If something's on offer, that's it. I like to buy anything sparkly or shiny. Clothes, shoes, bags, or cooking appliances, I like them. And then if I like it, it's fatal because I just buy and buy and buy. But all this spending has turned her family home into a warehouse of unopened purchases. It should be where we spend our time in peace and, you know, tranquility sort of thing. I mean, your home is your paradise. But this isn't. This is... It's a living hell. I didn't want my home to be like this. My husband's not happy, my son's not happy. I suppose they blame me a lot for it. I can't have friends round. I know that if they knew how bad this was, that they wouldn't want to see me upset like this. Ursula is so ashamed of her hoard, she hasn't let a friend come into her home for nearly 20 years. Instead, she's embraced an unconventional ritual. Hey, Jules, are you all right? Yes, you. Using friends' cars as her mobile living room. Oh, yeah. It is. Julie, I can't tell you, it's daunting. It is, it's, you know, you think everything's okay. There's half a mate says, this is fine, this is, this is, this is the, I need to do this. It'd be nice to pop in and see you now sometime. You don't have to sit in the car. Julie, you're welcome at any time. But I, at the moment, I'd rather sit in the car with you. <laughs> because it's just nicer, isn't it? See you later, bye, take care. 
Ursula prefers to come in the car. She does make a joke out of it, but more recently, it's become an issue for her. My dream for this house is that every room is clutter-free. I'd like my sister to come round and friends to come round. I know that I cannot manage to sort this out on my own. Ursula has asked for help from one of the UK's leading experts in hoarding disorder, psychotherapist Stelios Kiosis. Hoarders are ordinary people like you and I, but they have developed an abnormal way of coping, an abnormal behaviour. They have a mental health problem, and therefore they need a mental health solution. Stelios believes he can help a hoarder in only six weeks. Hello. Hi, Ursula. First, he needs to get to the cause of their obsessive hoarding. When, when was the last time somebody was in? A stranger. A stranger. A long, long time a long ago. A long time ago, so this is a big day. It is a big day. I'm afraid that room you can't, you can't oh. get in. Wow, a bit cramped in here. This is actually the uh, tidied up version, I'm is afraid. It, really? it is, okay. yes. So do, do you do much cooking in here? No, not very much at all. But you do a lot of ironing? I do some ironing. <laughs> I'm afraid cooking. to say we also use this for preparation of the no. vegetables, yes. You're using the ironing board? Yes. Every space in the house is filled. What are we seeing? I honestly, hand on heart, don't know how this ended up here. Another wall. Are all these your clothes? I'm afraid so, yeah. Stelios wants to access the lounge, where clues might explain why Ursula hoards. What a challenging room, isn't it? It is, yes. Yes, thank you. I'm going to have to pass you that. I have no idea what's in there. Thank you. So what was this room used for? We used to uh, have Christmases in here. We used to okay. entertain in here. Identify an item that you can't remember having bought. Uh, that, I don't know what that is or where I've got it from. I don't remember buying that, but I might have bought it for a present for somebody. How often do you buy things? I would not stop if, uh, if it wasn't for money restrictions, and that's the truth. So we're talking every day? Yeah. Stelios believes the trigger for every compulsive hoarder can be traced back to a traumatic event. So who was sitting here? And beneath the hoard lies Ursula's old family dining table. <laughs> it's quite sad, really. It's OK. My mum. Yeah, yeah. Um, sister, brother, thank you. Um, Are your parents alive? My father's father's dead. Your father's dead. Okay. Um, what, when did he die? Uh, when I was twelve. You were that young. A car came down the hill, um, and um, ran into them, and uh, killed my father. So, if your dear father. Uh -huh. Was alive, and he was sitting there, looking at us. What do you think your father would have said? <laughs> Saw this mess out of. So sorry. I think he'd be cross with me and shocked. Would you do it for him? Yeah, of course I would. You would, wouldn't you? Yeah. yeah. And why is that? Because it's a mess, and I don't want to live like this. Before he leaves, Stelios sets Ursula a task. Buried in her hoard are countless gifts she once bought for friends. So if you choose three gifts, mm -hmm. okay, three gift items you've never given away, yeah. and try and give those three things away before you see me. Yes. And the reason for that is purely because it will kickstart your motivation to declutter. Yes, I think I could okay. do that. Bye-bye. One of the causes of compulsive hoarding is trauma, predominantly the sense of loss. But what makes Ursula's situation even worse, even more traumatic, is the way her father died. Ursula is not alone in her compulsion to hoard. Hoarding disorder is now a growing problem, 
affecting up to 1.2 million people in the UK. Take me tea with me. What's left of it? In rugby, 58-year-old bachelor Nigel has filled his three-bedroom terraced house with a vast collection of car and electrical parts. My garage, and this is my patio. Well, I suppose it is a bit of a garage. A former truck driver and vintage car enthusiast, he's been collecting for almost 30 years. The garage up there, and I've got two cars in, in it. Maybe sell it on eventually, but I hope to be able to keep it, really. Don't like selling things. I'm one man and his dog, and seven and a half cars. It's not just cars that Nigel hoards. Every room in his house is packed full of clothes, boxes and old computers. I'm losing the battle here. Too many bits. And his living room is covered with car parts collected from auctions, garages and car websites. This is magic. This is the front of my new car. Whoa! Shiny hubcaps. Oh, yes, another car door. I bought this along with the one that's in the kitchen. They're not quite what I wanted. I bought the wrong things. My family have stopped coming round and I want to declutter, tidy and invite them round more. Find the new me. I do need a helping hand. A female companion would be nice. A car-loving female companion. In rugby, former lorry driver Nigel is one of a growing number of hoarders in the UK. He has allowed his love of vintage cars to completely take over his home. Too many car bits. Yes. With cluttered car parts piled high in every room, there's now only space for Nigel and his dog. Is that a nice bone, Baba? It, it annoys me when I see how untidy I've got and how much car bits I've got in here. I don't like the car bits in my house. Like most hoarders, Nigel is unable to help himself, so has turned to psychotherapist Stelios Kiosis. We've got a trailer here. We've got an old car there. This must be Nigel's house. Hello, hello sir. Hello, hello, hello. How are you? Very good. My latest, my latest project. I love this car. Lovely colour. Good. I'm glad you do. I love it too. Ah, there's another I, car behind there. I bought that one first. Yeah. Oh, hang on. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> one introduction at a time. Yeah. Okay. My, this is Devon. Yeah. Yes. And uh, yes, yeah, so Ilmer Minx, 55 Ilmer Minx, further up. It sounds like the cars have become your friends. They are. They are. Yeah. I can you swear at my cars. Do you talk to them? Do you actually I, like? I can't them? swear at you. You'd be yeah. upset, wouldn't you? Yeah. I can swear at them when they, when things don't go right. Because sometimes what people do is they replace. Yeah. Yeah. You know, humans with cars or other things, isn't it? Yeah. Stelios has a theory about why Nigel's never sold any of his cars. Part of not finishing the car is, is the fact that if you finish it, you have to sell it or give it away, you know? Mm. Whether not finishing something that you like, you ah. are able to find the excuse to hold it more unconsciously. There's something in that, maybe. And yes. I think that's why you're not finishing some of these cars, because you're attached to them, and I finishing means it's complete. Because Nigel is so devoted to his cars, Stelios thinks he should start off by clearing things he's not so emotionally attached to. You've got too many old computers, and I think it'll be good for you to start looking at getting those computers, perhaps keeping one that you use, mm. and the rest just recycle them. Because I think that will give you the kickstart to start and, uh, possibly decluttering more this, this room yeah. to start with. Yeah. Thank you, Nigel. If you start replacing humans with things, then you start having the problem of, of isolation, the problem of loneliness as time goes by, and really nobody really to talk to. Although he says he talks to them, the problem is they don't talk back and there's no real communication. The communication is always one way, not two ways. And I think deep down he realises that. He seemed to think I was replacing people with cars, and I do. They, they are my hobby, they are my, my, my pride and joy, and, and my children in a way, because I haven't got a family, and they are my little family. In Lancashire, compulsive gift buyer Ursula is carrying out her homework set by Stelios. Oh, these are some pearls. 
She must find three presents that she squirreled away so she can finally give them to the person they were intended for. I know exactly what the present is. I know what it looks like. I've written a name on the box. But I absolutely do not know where to begin to look for it. I don't know where I'm going to get. If I'd have known it was this difficult, I would have said I could manage one instead of three. Soul destroying, wasting time like this to look for something that I should just be able to put my hands on. The challenge is proving tougher than expected. I'll have to, I'm coming out of here, it's making me a bit depressed. After nearly three hours of searching, Ursula's found a gift she bought for her sister Anne. Oh, right, now that book belongs to Anne. Oh, I have found a present I bought for my friend. I bought this um, three years ago when I went to America. Now that I've found it, she's going to get those. They're earmarked for my friend, my lovely friend. The fact that it took me so long to find the presents and that I'm going to be able to give them today as it's got to make it worthwhile. If I give them quickly, I won't change my mind. Because <laughs> I do like that shiny purse. Hello. Hi, yes, how are you? <laughs> I've had these for you for three years. Three years? Three years. Wow. And I found <laughs> them. So they're yours. Oh, thank had you. Your name on them, oh, so. thank you. They're lovely. And that is so me. And I oh, need no, a new little oh, bag. No, you know what I'm oh, like? No. Oh, thank oh. you. That is so kind. It costs her a lot of money. I don't understand why she does it, but I really want to help her and she needs the help because it's ruined her life for a lot of years. Okay. Okay. Can you ring, yeah? I will do. Okay, bye. bye. I'm on my way now to my sister's house, my sister Anne's house, and I'm going to give her her present. Hoping I get the same buzz and the same feeling from this as well. Ursula is keen to show younger sister Anne she's starting to declutter. Hello, it's Anna. Hiya. Hello. Hello. Hello, chicken. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too. Yeah. I've come with us too. <laughs> <laughs> and I've only just found it. That. So I've had to hunt for that. How long ago was that? Well, it was over a year ago, wasn't it? Possibly two, I don't know. I remember you saying it, but yeah. I just forgot about it. I thought oh, no. it was one of those things that I'll never oh, no. see. The challenge was I had to find three things in the house that belonged to other people right. and I have to pass it over to them. Oh, how lovely. So oh, I'll see you soon. Yeah. I wanted to drop see yours you Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Yeah. Uh -huh. I think this is definitely a step in the right direction. The fact that she's letting go of stuff that she's had is fantastic. Even though she's bought it for other people, um, she's managing to let go of it, which is th my biggest worry for her was that she wouldn't be able to let go when she finds stuff. It's quite satisfying to know that they've actually gone where they were supposed to be going. So I'm quite relieved at that, really. <laughs> In rugby, encouraged by his meeting with Stelios, Bachelor Nigel has invited his sister Angela to help him to start decluttering. This is a huge step for Nigel. Although close to Angela, he's been too ashamed to invite her into his home since the 1990s. The last time I was at the house was about 20 years ago for barbecues we used to come to. It was really nice, it was brand new, everything was nice and shiny. And now, <laughs> It's not quite so um, nice. <laughs> God, look at what? this. What? Isn't that bad? Yes, it is. No, it ain't. Yes, it is. Mother would be oh, ashamed well. of you. What on earth is that? You know what one of them is? That's, that's an air compressor. It blows your tyres up. Surely to God you don't need that many tools. Oh, my God. What? You used to have a garden. Well, I've got a garden. Shocked by the state of Nigel's home, Angela is keen to start decluttering. Why don't you get rid of some of this stuff, Nigel? No, I want to rest. What, a rest already? But we need, yeah, 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 we yeah, need yeah, to I'm move something. I'm getting old. There's nothing to move. Come on, let's take the bike out so no there's some way. Room. No, no, you can't take the bike out. Where are we going to put it? No, it's not going out. Well... The car doors could go outside, couldn't they? No, there's not really any way you can put them out of the way at the moment. Despite Angela's best efforts, after two frustrating hours, 
Nigel has refused to get rid of a single item. You're making loads and loads of excuses why you can't do anything. Um... If it was tidier, yeah, I wouldn't be ashamed to bring the kids over. I don't think Emma and Richard have been over ever. I'm going. Angela isn't convinced Nigel's house will ever be ready for a visit from his niece and nephew. I know my daughter wouldn't come round in that state. My son couldn't cope with the mess that's in there. He just couldn't cope with that. I wouldn't want to bring them round, to be quite honest. I don't know whether he knows where to start even to get rid of it. In Livam St Anne's, compulsive shopper and hoarder Ursula has a visitor. Ooh, I could see it was you. Ah, uh, hiya! Hello. Hello. Since seeing Stelios, Ursula is feeling more comfortable about showing her hoard to her sister. All these boxes are unopened. <gasps> really? Mm. How long have these been unopened for? I don't know. 18th of April 2010. So that's over two years ago. What is in there? Is it heavy? No idea. You've got a lot to go through. <laughs> it saddens me that all this stuff is just uh. not used. Anne finds the hoard overwhelming and never stays for long. When I come here, I can stay 20 minutes, sometimes half an hour. And it's not because I don't want to stay, because I really love your company, but I just feel a bit like everything is just crashing in on me. I feel but very can't you just ignore it and talk to me? I so. can't, because when I'm looking at you, I can yeah. see it all. I can see all the stuff around me, and it's that that mm. really stresses me out. I'm going to make a move, OK? okay. It's been lovely to see you. And you, sweetheart. Right. Take care. It's desperately yeah. hard seeing her go yeah. through this, because... It's not, she, she's not happy. You can see she's not happy. She used to be happy and she's just not happy. And it's this that's making her dreadfully unhappy. <sighs> Sorry. Hoping to unlock the reason for her hoarding, psychotherapist Delios Kiosas has invited Ursula to his clinic to find out more about her father's death. So that kind of loss Mm. You know, the loss of losing your father. And what did, what did that create in your life? Big hole. Big emptiness. A big hole, a big emptiness, yeah. How have you tried to fill that hole? Probably by buying things and putting them all around me so that... Um, to make me feel better, but it's counterproductive because it hasn't. It hasn't, because no. it's all external. Mm. It's what you feel is internal. Mm. Is it beginning to make more sense? It does make more sense. I am enjoying the therapy and I think it's really enlightening and it's made me very aware of things. For instance, the reason that I hoard is a symptom of the situations I've found myself in in the past and haven't dealt with. So I don't feel such a freak. <laughs> Now that Ursula is beginning to understand the reason behind her hoarding, she is ready for the next stage of her treatment. Looking forward to meeting Ursula. And, uh, and seeing what hoard she's got. Yeah, and she's going to be nervous um, before she meets us, aren't I? Yeah, she's going to be apprehensive. Today, she is getting a visit from expert declutterers Zoe and Alison. Every hoarder's worst nightmare. Mm. This is where we're going to make a new start, new mm -hmm. life, new start. Mm. Mm -hmm. We're going to start in this corner. Right. We're going to free up this hall, mm -hmm. but we want you to work with us. Mm. What we have to do is start to clear an area, mm -hmm. a hallway, an, mm. an alley that we can get to. Right, OK. Hang on, you've got a broken hanger. Again, clutter, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. So it needs to go. Yes. Right, what have we got in here now? This looks like plastic. Are they all over the house, plastic bags? Or is this just something? Why are they here? They may be all over the house, I don't know. So I'm going to ask you to pick up some items right, okay. and work with me. Tell us yeah. a bit about this picture. For three hours, Zoe and Alison help a shell-shocked Ursula remove clutter from her home. Just take a small amount and then it doesn't seem so bad, OK? Is that a place that you use? Uh, no. Right, so we can part with that, can't we? Yes. Can you carry on? Are you OK? Is that going to charity? Yes, this is rubbish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you've got some lovely gifts here, again, mm. that you probably forgot that you've had. Mm -hmm. Another box. Mm. And what we've got here, is that perfume? Yeah. Yeah? Mm -hmm. How does it make you feel entering the room? It's just How hard work. Eventually, it all gets too much for Ursula. 
No, you're losing mm. your energy a bit now. I am. I'm, I am really getting are. tired. Okay, well, I'll tell you what. Then, I'm so, uncomfortable. Yeah, why don't we just clear the pathway here? It has been an emotional day. It's been a draining day. I'm exhausted. I'm pleased that we have made some headway uh, you know this space is lovely to see i'm just trying to imagine everything else gone and i've got the whole carpet back again first day that is excellent she, she moved very quickly she did yeah I, was... I had quite slight reservations but i have got fear i hope that the room stays clear i hope that she's committed to what we said today we'll have to wait and see till we come back let's hope she keeps up the good work Over the past 10 years, compulsive shopper Ursula has spent thousands of pounds buying and hoarding away presents. Most of us enjoy shopping, but in Ursula's case, it has become extreme, it has become compulsive. That's why I've asked her to open those boxes and to find out that what's inside, it's actually meaningless. Now, halfway through her six-week hoarding therapy, Ursula has asked her sister Anne to help sort out her unopened purchases. I think it might be quite good for it to be Anne because I'm not, not going to be embarrassed as to, to what the content is. I mean, you know, if I've bought jewellery and I've overspent, she's not going to judge me or... So it's probably the best person to have. Hello. Oh, How are you? No fun. It's like Christmas, isn't it? Well, no, they're not wrapped up. <laughs> Oh, boring. Is it? Yeah. What is it? Hair tongs. I've found, I bought... Hair tongs? Yes. You just, just bought some. Do you know what? We found another lot of hair tongs upstairs in the bedroom, so I've got, like, four lots that I've just bought. So who did you get that for? I might have got it for me. I bet you did, actually. But I bought a few more since because I didn't know I got it. Yeah, so you don't need that, really? Not really. I've no idea who I've ordered this for. What on earth would I have ordered one of those for? I have no idea. Oh, my goodness. What? 13th of the 9th, 2007. That's over five years ago. What would I have ordered it that for? It must have been a gift for somebody, must it? I can't believe you've got these things, but you can't remember ordering them. I can't. Oh, when did I get that? I have no idea. Oh, 2009. This is your fourth one. Um, yes, I've got, um, well, I've got one exactly the same as it. One very similar to it. One lot smaller than it. Right, so we can get rid of this then if you've got Absolutely not. Right. Why not? Because I'm keeping this, because I wanted it. So I'm very, very pleased to found this. This is for in the house. Where in the house? Uh, in the living room. This is what I'm going to write my Christmas cards on. But you've already got a tater, a little... A TV wobbles. Table. That's for eating my food off. So then you can get rid of the TV table? No, because I can't eat my food off this. It's got a lip on it and I don't like doing that. So you couldn't give it to charity or give one of the other ways to charity? Because you didn't even know you had this. I did know I had it. I just didn't come across it. Did you really know you I had promise. it? I promise. I absolutely promise I knew I had it. Right. I promise I did. Despite Anne's help, after nearly two hours, Ursula has opened just ten boxes and calls a halt to proceedings. I'm tired now and I've, I feel like I've done enough, don't you? I think this um, process is likely to push her to the limits, definitely. Whenever we've done anything before, it's always been with me and uh, I'm soft with her. And I think when somebody starts getting tough with her, she's going to find it really hard to deal with. Oh, God, I'm in it. In rugby, Former lorry driver Nigel is also struggling to remove anything from his home. I don't know what I'm doing with it. <clears throat> I feel like I'm moving things for the sake of it. I just didn't want to do it in this order. That's an excuse not to do it, isn't it? So, I'm a bad boy. I knew I was going to have to do this, and it's been easy to put it off for another day, another day, another day, and, and, and that's the challenge, not to put it off for another day, another day. I don't like the idea of getting rid of the computers because I'll have nothing to play with or tinker with. I would have liked to have kept the computers. Two hours later, and Nigel has managed to move the computers from one side of the room to the other. None have left his house. It's just over four weeks into their therapy, 
and with both Nigel and Ursula finding it difficult to declutter, Stelios has a plan of action. Both Nigel and Ursula are struggling at the moment, so I think it's a good idea for them to get together and share their experiences of hoarding, but also realise how they've been restricted over time by the clutter. Stelios wants Ursula and Nigel to see what they've lost due to their hoarding, in the hope it will speed up their recovery. Why have we meeting in the warehouse? I could get a few cars in here. Magic. This is Nigel. This Hello, is Ursula. Nigel, pleased to meet you. How do you do? Hello. We're going to do a very simple exercise just to experience a little bit mm -hmm. what space is and what happens when something interferes with that space, OK? Mm -hmm. An empty space could be either a living space or a dead space. We're looking more for living space, OK? So your, your homes will become a living space. Well, let's go. Tell me perhaps one or two things you feel you've lost because of the accumulation of stuff you have. No, no parties. Parties? I miss, miss, not, miss, miss me big barbecues, but they were... OK, so maybe socialising. Socialising would be one mm. of them, isn't it? is one of the things we lose. Spot on. Lack of, so finances can be affected by the hoard. Can you relate to that? Absolutely. Okay. What is it you've lost in life? Who have you lost? Uh, my whole family. Your whole family. Mm. One of the things that we need to do in order to see, see our families, you know, be able to socialise, is to clear the space. When you let go, you can embrace. Mm. And part of letting go means clearing your emotional and physical space. I have to let go to enable my family to come back in. My family have never wanted to be out, but I've obviously been shutting them out, and I do want them back in. Until now, Nigel has been resistant to change, mm. but today seems to have struck a chord. Today has been a very good day. It's broadened my horizon, you know, meeting another clutterer. It just has helped me want, want, to, want to get at it and get the job done and get sorted. Back in rugby and buoyed by the joint therapy, Nigel has agreed to let declutterers Zoe and Alison help tackle his hoard. I've got lovely ladies come in, the professional declutterers. I hope they're lovely. Hello. Hello, Hello Nigel. Nigel. How are you? Oh, I'm all right now. Yes. <laughs> all right tonight. And what room do you call this? Well, my storeroom. <laughs> is this meant to be your lounge? Yes, this is my lounge. But it's become a garage, hasn't it? This is my lovely car, my pride and joy at the moment. No, just there's not even any seats in the car. Because they're up there, so I can put stuff on top of them to store. Oh, more storage? Yes, car storage. <laughs> oh, my God. And another car, Nigel. Do you see you've got too year. many? Nigel, what room's this? this? This is my dining room. A dining room? After a tour of the house, it's time to tackle Nigel's clutter head on. Anything that's personal will go in a personal book so that you can sort out a later date on your own. Mm -hmm. How's that okay. sound? That's OK. Fantastic. Off I'm shaking at the knees at the moment, but that's OK. So, there's one of your speakers. speakers. They're definitely a keepers, they are. OK. They seem rather big. They're rather good. Are they? Yes. Are they the only speakers you've got? Probably not. That's, That's a charger. That's, yeah, but it's not computers, is it? No, but it's, 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 it's relevant to be... Yeah, but shouldn't it be with the tools, Nigel? There's no room for it really with the tools. It's, it's me Bosch charger. It's me Bosch tool charger. Yes, mm -hmm. it should be with the tools. Right. After nearly two hours, and despite his earlier breakthrough, Nigel has not allowed a single item to leave his home. Right, I want you to come over to that side near Alison. Come on, and I want you to start pulling some things out from the shelf. What about this one? Uh, relevant. So why are you keeping that keyboard when you've got a brand new keyboard and you've got a keyboard there and a keyboard because there? Because it's just here and convenient. And no, but it's not, because it's you're keeping something you don't need to and keep. And someone will want that keyboard. Who? I don't know. I've been turning people down. I didn't know I had so many keyboards. But I'm not going to let you to part. You're not going to get to part with it then. No. Nope. Although we're going in there to try and declutter. He's now becoming very unhappy. To him, it, it's really unbalancing. It's knocking, knocking him off kilt. Zoe finally finds an approach that works, selling Nigel's scrap metal. 
and every bit of metal makes money. Ooh, I like this. I, I like this lady. So this lady is a nicer lady than so I need, thought. Don't we? We need. We need, we need to get some money. We need the dosh. Re-energised by the thought of turning his hoard into cash. Get rid of some scrap. I get a few bob. Yeah. I'm happy. Nigel starts to let go of some of his precious possessions. Jobs are good and scrap gone. I've got some money. Ten pounds for me. Zoe and Alison are back in Lancashire and it's their last chance to encourage Ursula to clear some of her hoard. What about this game here? Can you survive a midlife crisis? I think that... Without cracking up, breaking up or going broke? That might be very Mind good you. for my sister. I think I'm going to give that to one. She is... Um... She'll see the funny side of that, Yeah, she will. She? Why do you want to keep this one when you've got other bags? Because it looks like a nice, it looks like a smaller one that I can take out with me. Have you got any other smaller ones? Mm, probably loads. I think that. it should be sold. Yes. You need, you're here yes. to get things out of the house. Absolutely. You're going to try yeah. and sell things. You're going to make some money. Yes. You need to bring some income back in because yeah. you've bought so much stuff. Yes. Sell. Yeah. First results seem promising. Well, he's big and he takes up a lot of room, so I'm want... really pleased that's yeah. going. Charity? Yeah. Yes, charity. Wonderful. Yes. Yes. But things are moving too fast for Ursula. Sorry, oh, just it's OK, my darling. It is quite upsetting. It's hard, just, These are things that I've worked hard for um, and bought with good intentions. Actually, getting this back out again, it's, it feels like it's pulling at my heartstrings a bit. I know. No. <laughs> I know. In Lancashire, every day for the past 20 years, compulsive shopper Ursula has been buying presents. Unopened, they have taken over her home. Are you donating this to charity? Yes, yes. I think so. Oh, that's lovely. Professional declutterers Zoe and Alison have come round to help her remove them. Oh, I might never get up. Oh, that is lovely. I feel like I'm on the holidays now. <laughs> for the first time in years, Ursula can sit in her lounge. She's motivated, she's well-spirited. It's as if she's had a completely new personality change. It's not the same Ursula I met a few, couple of weeks ago to what she is now. As time passes, Ursula's family home is starting to re-emerge from the clutter. As we get further on, we'll get more of the table. Yes. It's coming to life. Let me open the door for you, my darling. Zoe is keen to help Ursula recoup some of the thousands of pounds she spent on unused goods. She is taking her to a local cash converters. I've come to bring some things for you to buy. Fantastic. I'd like to make some money. <laughs> Ursula has 25 boxes and bags to sell. The total I'm going to be able to give you today is £200. Is that OK? That's brilliant. Fantastic. I'm thrilled to bits for that, thank you. I want to bring some more. You want to bring some more? <laughs> I do. That's it. That's great, isn't it? There you go. Thank and you very much. £200. For those boxes of rubbish. Well, they weren't rubbish, they were good things, but they, to me, they were the noose around my neck. After six weeks of therapy, Nigel also appears to have turned a corner. Mm. Now decluttering at his own pace, he's continuing to move items out of his home. Away! And away. Lovely. Getting rid of it. Aha! Hey! One more bag gone. Makes a start, doesn't it? And at long last, he's getting rid of his old computers, donating them to a local charity. I'll see you again, maybe. OK, bye now. With his house now clear, Nigel wants to celebrate. I've got some members of my family coming round, visiting. I think their jaws are going to drop when they see how much I've done. Because I don't think they believe they could do it or it was going to happen, and it's happening. The new Nige, new super, super unclutterer. Slash it rolls in. Just six weeks ago, Nigel's house was a car and computer dumping ground. And as a result, he'd shut himself away from the people closest to him. After his hoarding therapy, Nigel now has the space he needs to entertain his family. I used to be the party party man, big dues. 
Now we're having a little do, little family gathering. I love it. I am looking forward to this. Nigel's niece and nephew, Emma and Richard, have never been inside their uncle's house. Oh, my God. It almost looks like a home. Almost. Only almost. almost. Come on in, Emma. Much better. Oh, Goodness sure. me. Only much You couldn't have got in here last week. It's a family hug in. Hello. He's an hug have a chicken bite. Thank you. Does this mean that I can come round and see you again, then? Of course you can. I, mean, I could do the good dog walker. Yeah, I can walk the dog for you. Uh -huh. As long as you keep it tidy. <laughs> I am absolutely amazed at the amount of work he's put into it. It's really nice to see that Nigel has now replaced all the objects and car parks with family. I'll come and see Nigel more often. It's the first time I've been. I've wanted to come for a long time. Um, and now, hopefully, this will be the first of many visits and, and we'll come over at the weekend. Cheers! Cheers. Cheers. Tidy fruitures. Of course I'm going to keep it tidy. I'm a tidy person. <laughs> <laughs> In Lancashire, psychotherapist Stelios has come to find out if his therapy has worked for compulsive shopper Ursula. Can't see anything, but hopefully some improvement. Well, I can come in without yes, uh, without falling over. Yeah, without falling over. <laughs> Look at this. It feels like you know I can walk mm. without without standing. knocking anything yeah. down. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Just six weeks ago, Ursula's Edwardian villa was full to the brim with unopened packages. She had no room to cook in her kitchen, could not sit in her lounge, and for 20 years had been too ashamed to invite any friends inside. Oh. Now, her house is a home again. Amazing, you know. There's more space to walk. There's more space to to do things. In yes. Here. So how does it feel, you know, having your kitchen back into your home? It feels brilliant. And where is the iron? Uh, the iron, the iron board, board has gone. The famous iron board. Yes, the iron <laughs> board. <laughs> it wasn't used for iron, but it was used for, <laughs> for pans so, and uh, pots. Yeah, that's gone. And the I can't believe that when I came. I know. I know. <laughs> You know, I couldn't remember what it was like before, and... Well, I do you remember? I the mountain. I there know. was a mountain here. Yes. And I had to, you know, yeah. go over it, and... It's just amazing. <laughs> How do you feel? Well done. Oh, thank you. Oh, it feels well fantastic. Well it, I'm getting little snippets back of when we used to spend time in here. And have, you, have you bought anything? I have or? not bought anything. I okay. haven't felt the need to go on the internet. What were the turning points, actually, for you? Turning point was definitely realising that my father's death wasn't anything to do with me. Yes. That was the big, that the is, big thing. That is the big mm. one, isn't it? Absolutely. What the therapy has done with Ursula, it's helped her to bring closure with her father's death. Ursula can finally open up her home to friends and family. I'm really looking forward to, you know, having an afternoon with them and feeling relaxed instead of all het up and tense. Uh, so I have to uh, just get cracking with this. Ursula's sister, Anne, is the first to see the transformation. Hello. Oh, come in. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes. oh, Ursa, how beautiful. I can't believe it, honestly. Oh, no. <laughs> It's fantastic. It's beautiful. It's a big room. It's a big room. You wouldn't have thought so. Do you think you'd be able to come round and stay for oh, more oh, than God, yes. 20 minutes? Yes, you'll have to buy the coffee now. <laughs> <laughs> Look at it. Next to arrive are Ursula's friends, most of whom have never been allowed inside before. <gasps> Welcome. Oh, my gosh. Oh, 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 o
Yay! Yay! Transformation! Oh, it's fantastic. Oh, that's lovely. Oh, oh how that's lovely. lovely. I've been trying to think of it. <laughs> it's lovely, isn't it, this? I've, I've never been able to do this before. And I've always wanted to do. And, you know, I always, <laughs> I always say that, you know, that famous line, I can't reciprocate. But, um, now you can. Yes. Now I can, yeah. yes. Yeah. Do you think you'll ever go back to that place again? Or do you think you're, you're well and truly I gone? I am and... so frightened of bringing anything into this room. Good. That, because I love this space. Yes. Mm. Mm. And I don't want it to happen again. It'll be, it'll be nice for us to be able to come round as well on an evening, won't it? Yeah, you wait yeah, for your yeah. invitation, chick. <laughs> We normally sit in the car. Um, it's just absolutely brilliant to be able to sit in the lounge and talk to her and for her to have her friends around as well. They're changing her now and um, it's just amazing that she wants to let people in and show them her beautiful house. Cheers. Cheers. I've definitely got my sister back. I can see it's twinkle in her again. She's happy. She's just like she was 20 years ago and it's lovely to have her back. <laughs> <laughs> and it was worth every single step of the way to get to get to this. I feel guilt free. I feel as though I've been given the tools now to continue and I want to make this a clutter free zone. Home, clutter free home. <laughs>